I started and developed a seven figure real estate investing business by following these steps. And today I'm sharing those steps with you so that you can start and grow your own real estate investing business in 2024 and beyond. I hope this helps. Before we dive into exactly what to do, we have to weigh our investment options. Real estate investing spans a wide range of investment methods and vehicles. You can wholesale, fix and flip, rent short term or long term. You can do single family, multifamily, or commercial real estate. You can also choose to do it virtually or in your own backyard. I pretty much done them all. And at the end of the day, you have to figure out what you want to do given the constraints that you have. When I first started out, I was wholesaling in a completely different location. I did it because I did not have too much money and the price point in my market was just way too hot. I gradually transitioned back into my own market doing fix and flip as I made some money. You gotta start somewhere. As you grow, you have more choices to either stick with what you've been doing hiring people to do it for you or expand to other markets like your own backyard or doing it there. Once you decide on a method, you have to find your first property to purchase. The first one is perhaps the most important one for two reasons. Number one, you can't afford to lose. You have limited experience and most likely limited capital, if any. Number two, it sets the tone for your young startup. You want to start on a good note and I will pick your first investment property carefully. In my previous video, I mentioned partnering up with somebody who is more experienced in the market that you want to be in. That way, most of your risk is taken away. You may be giving up a lot of equity, but that's okay. You pay someone with the equity you've given up in exchange for the experience that the seasoned investor has. It will serve you in the long run. Besides, I've never seen a school where you get paid to learn. Our education system is so backwards. You rack up so much debt and you're not guaranteed to make money at the end of the day. Our current school system doesn't teach you to make money. A lot of it you have to learn outside of school. For someone who wants to work for himself, School is not a good use of time. For somebody who doesn't know what to do, school provides some time for you to figure it out, maybe. It keeps your mind occupied on passing your classes, but does it really help you figure out what you want to do? Maybe to some extent. My point with all of this is to tell you to not be afraid to take the jump and invest in a property. I was told if you have a good deal, money will come. And I would say that this is true. And I would like to say that with the caveat that you know who to call. And no one's got a rich uncle who has unlimited money to fund a deal. So when you're out hunting for a sweet deal, you should also try to establish a good network for you to take it down or dispose of it. When you're starting out, you will not have any track record. Everything will be difficult for you. If you have a solid network and your partners know that you have something to offer, you can leverage their track record. The relationship is symbiotic in that you leverage the person's track record and know-how, and you in turn bring him or her a deal. Everyone benefits. In the beginning, the split of the profit share may be tipped toward your partner. However, over time, as you build your experience, it will be more fair, if not toward your side. You have something unique to offer, and that can be worth a lot. There's also a little bit of wiggle room on how competitive you need to be, meaning there are certain conditions that be more favorable to you. How competitive you are depends on how hot the market is. Back when COVID hit, there was a scarce. We had to cut our prices and offload our properties as soon as we could. Then right after COVID, with all the stimulus that the government was doing, printing money, rate drop, etc. Everyone was out hunting for a good deal. Everybody was on a buying spree. Everything went up in value. And after the crazy party hangover, we experienced an artificial contraction. The Fed realized it printed way too much money 
and the fiscal discipline was just way too loose. It jacked up the rate and no one was buying. The market went on a negative swing. Real estate investors like myself experienced such a high interest rate that we're not buying and prices became stagnant. So you see how the market really detects real estate investing. Well, investing in general. I learned a lesson earlier on when someone told me there's always an opportunity to make money whether the market is up or down. If it's down, you just need to buy it deeper so that you can still make money. If the market is doing well, you just need to relax your criteria a little bit so that you can be competitive. I've always adapted so I can stay in the game and over a long period of time, I come out positive. In a competitive and hot market, I've seen fixed offers go as high as 80% of the after repair value. We will bid as high as that just so that we can win offer. However, in the current environment where the rate is so high and the real estate market is so on the cooler side, we wouldn't be as risky and don't go more than 68% of the after repair value. We just sold the house which in a hot market would command $25,000 or more worth of value. We dropped it so that we could get it sold. Thankfully, we budgeted $25,000 into our initial acquisition. I would say the market, especially the down market will test you. You either will starve because you can't get your hands on a deal that makes sense, or you get burned because you pay way too much for a deal. You have to strike a balance and hunt, hustle, and work even harder so that you can put food on the table. If you pass the test, you get to fight for another day. And like I mentioned before, if you stay in the game long enough, you will come out just fine. You will just be okay. Now there are a lot of ways to stay updated on what's going on in the real estate market that can help you make decisions on what strategies you want to choose. I'm a licensed realtor, so I have access to the MLS and look at the trailing months market data. It tells me whether we're in a buyer's market or the seller's market. How many days on market before a house gets sold and what's the average sold price per square foot, etc. These data tell me the absorption rate and how competitive we should price our homes for sale. I run a monthly meetup locally. It's my job to give market updates every month so that I keep people informed about the market as well. And of course, I use this information to make decisions on my own investments. If the market is telling me we have way too much inventory, I will price my offer at a heavier discount. However, if we have too little inventory, I will price my offer competitively so that we will win. We use a tool that I like to call the escalation clause to do this. The data also tells me that the median home price so that I stay right around or below that. I do this because I'm in the business of selling popular homes by price. There are more buyers and that's good for me. If my homes are way above the median home price, there are less buyers in the marketplace. The buyer pool is smaller and homes tend to stay on the market longer. It's just more difficult for us to sell in that kind of environment. But a big part of investing in real estate is deciding how much money you want to put into renovating a project. A good place to start is realizing that there is a difference between a must fix and a nice fix. Must fix is dry rot, roof repair, broken window, dated kitchen cabinets, shot carpet, etc. Nice fix is Alexa voice enabled smart switches, a Nest thermostat, or motion sensor kitchen faucet, etc. To maximize returns, please focus on just the must fix. Stay away from the upgrades that's beyond necessary. Most owners do not know how to play with gadgets. Give buyers a house that's rid of problems as if it's a brand new house that's got natural tone color. No pink color interior nor bright yellow exterior, just neutral earth tone color. That way you appeal to the vast majority of the population. It's less risk for you because they will appreciate it and it will help you to sell that house fast. On the other hand, I have people who never take any action 
because of the inherent risk with real estate investing, which is not so different from other forms of investing. I would say that one way to mitigate risk is to have an advisor by your side. I have my chief operating officer, who is my advisor. I think having two people on valuation is way better than having just one person. And I would say if you can have multiple exits, you mitigate your risk. I bought a house which we spent 90,000 to fully remodel it. By the time we finished, Ray was already through the roof. So what could we do? Well, we ended up turning it into a group home. We collected about $4,200 a month and cash flow about $1,500 after paying the mortgage and other expense obligations. When you only have one exit strategy, your risk is magnified greatly. However, when you have multiple exit strategies, your risk is greatly reduced. One of the most surefire ways to mitigate risk is by keeping your knowledge up to date. There are a lot of ways to do this, ranging from reading the news, listening to podcasts, or watching videos about real estate investing. And a brilliant way to continue exposing yourself to that information is by subscribing. Now, here's the thing. You can know everything there is to know about real estate, but if you aren't doing any marketing, then it's just as effective as knowing absolutely nothing. As much as a real estate transaction is a multi-dimensional deal making, most people only look at the price. Price in their mind determines whether to even bother looking at the property. You can have a very wonderful product, but to get people to even look at it and pick their interests, you gotta attract them to come in. The way to do it is to price it lower than the competitions and have more than one buyer come in and drive out the price that way. As a seller, you want more than one buyer. Competitive pricing drives out demand, which drives out pricing. So if you're a seller, don't get so hung up with the initial price. It doesn't mean that you have to come into selling at that price. It just provides an abundant opportunity for your deal to be looked at by so many eyeballs. And by the theory of supply and demand in Econ 101, the demand at the end of the day will drive out the price and settle it. Let the market dictate what that is. Our manipulation of pricing is only to speed up that equilibrium. Instead of putting the price way too high and waiting for it to calm down in price to settle at the equilibrium, we place it below what we think is fair and excite everybody enough to look at it and give us a price which the market thinks is fair. Oftentimes, past performance doesn't guarantee future results. What the market will take often surprises you. I've had my properties that have gone way over and way under. You just make a suggestion that's more than reasonable and let the market determine the final price. It can also be really, really helpful to have a network of people that can fill in the lacking spaces of your investment strategy. This is crucial, not just in real estate, but also in any other business. There is this saying that says that your net worth is your network. Your network here, I would say, is your business network. How much your business makes is all dependent on the network that your business has and that you have built over time. I like to do as many deals with new and seasoned agents alike so that they know how we work and how trustworthy we are. By building trust and creating an image that we do what we say we're gonna do, they will keep working with us. We plant the new seeds and maintain our garden of the existing network so that we can get through perennially. If anything, the meetup that we have on a monthly basis is for the very purpose of getting our brand out so that whenever people think about selling their house, they will be reminded to call us. A big part of making sure that you're on the right trajectory is by carefully tracking your key performance indicators. The more ways that you measure, the more ways that you can succeed. For our house flips, every flip has its own sheet of rehab expenses. Before we embark on a flip, we calculate the after repair value given the inspection, project walk walkthrough, etc. The carrying costs, so on and so forth. We will compare the two 
after the project is complete and so if we're off we seek to find out why is it because that the material cost has gone up is it because our labor cost has gone up the budget or the projection versus the realized cost gives us a little glimpse of the macro economy from the perspective of our business last year we for sure felt the cost of inflation everything had gone up and that's real however housing prices did not so our margin shrunk we had to deal with that it's not our best year however we managed to stay afloat at the end of the day it comes down to cash flow management if it can be managed well you have a business that can sustain for a long period of time and that's great it sounds all cliche but it goes to show that if you follow something that you're passionate about then it will work out one way or the other i love real estate therefore i welcome lessons that it teaches me and i love challenges that it gives me i get to control my money as i see fit versus giving it to some wall street fund manager who can blow my hard money and still get paid for it there are many many lessons i've shared in my channel i leave you with this one lesson in this video is that you gotta have the grit to stay in the journey no matter how slow how boring their boring days how challenging and how difficult it can be you can't close your shop just because you don't feel like it you remain open because just by your being there people know that you exist and eventually you will get their business always hustle have the grit be tenacious keep going you're bound to succeed in this business. And if you want to learn how to become a real estate millionaire in 2024, then watch this video here.